What are cobalt and Japan dryers? And how do they differ? It's a common question, but surprisingly, few grasp the complexities of these additives. So let's clear up the confusion. Oil painting dryers, more formally known as siccatives, serve one primary function. They accelerate the drying process by promoting oxidation and polymerization. They alter the natural curing process, sometimes in unpredictable ways. However, not all dryers perform equally and misusing them can lead to disastrous results. Cobalt dryers are the most commonly used, yet their risks are often ignored. These compounds, typically cobalt soaps, such as cobalt naphthenate or cobalt linolate, function as surface dryers. They expedite drying at the topmost layer of the paint while leaving the underlying layers soft and vulnerable. This leads to an all too familiar outcome, a deceptively dry surface concealing a structurally unstable foundation. As the lower layers continue drying at their natural pace, the surface may wrinkle or form a network of cracks that threaten the integrity of the painting. Worse still, excessive use of cobalt dryers results in inflexible, brittle paint film, jeopardizing its longevity. Their use must be measured and restrained and applied in only the smallest quantities necessary. Here's the counterintuitive part. Using too much dryer doesn't just fail to speed up drying, it actually slows it down. Artists assume more dryer equals faster results, but research proves otherwise. Beyond a certain point, adding more dryer backfires, disrupting oxidation rather than enhancing it. Instead of speeding up the process, excess dryers create a stalled film, sometimes even making drying slower than if no dryer had been used at all. A tiny bit of cobalt dryer, sometimes about 0.005%, helps oxidation along. But double that amount and suddenly, you're no better off than if you hadn't used any dryer at all. And in thicker paint layers, <laughs> things get weirder. At first, loading up on dryer seems to give a boost, but that advantage quickly vanishes. Meanwhile, paint without any dryer keeps curing at a steadily dependable rate. So why does this happen? Two big reasons. First, dryers work primarily at the surface, creating skin that locks in the still wet paint underneath. Instead of driving equally, the top hardens while the inside stays soft, leading to cracks, wrinkles, and paint that refuses to fully cure. Second, cobalt dryer doesn't have any stain power. Once it's exposed to oxygen, its effectiveness starts dropping within just seven to eight hours. That means all that extra dryer you added is already losing strength before the paint even has a chance to dry properly. This explains why thick paint loaded with dryers seems to dry fast at first, but then just stops. Historically, dryers carried names like Japan dryers, Courtrai dryers, and others, but the reality is that modern formulations often bear little resemblance to their predecessors. The names persist, but the ingredients? Well, that's anyone's guess, thanks to manufacturers who rarely disclose the actual compositions. Painters assume they are working with tried and true formulations when in reality, they might be using an entirely different chemical cocktail. Marketing jargon only adds to the confusion, leaving painters convinced 
they're using a miracle solution when, in reality, they might be sabotaging their work. Without transparency about their ingredients, they can introduce more problems than they solve. Historically, Japan dryers contained lead and manganese, which were once freely used before health concerns led to their decline. Genuine Japan dryers, which are historical rec recreations featuring lead and manganese, are indispensable for those seeking to match traditional painting methods. Today's Japan dryers consist of cobalt, manganese, zirconium, and calcium in blends designed to promote even drying throughout the entire paint rather than solely at the surface. The result? A more stable drying process. However, Japan dryers are not without their drawbacks. They increase gloss, which may or may not be desirable, and overuse results in excessive darkening, embrittlement, and unnatural paint aging. Beyond these two, other dryers exist, each with their own strengths and limitations. Cobalt and zirconium mixed dryers mitigate some of the weaknesses of cobalt alone. Modern Cortrai dryers may be formulated with zirconium and calcium and attempt to balance drying speed with stability, but may not offer faster drying. Meanwhile, the so-called white dryers, composed primarily of calcium, which is an auxiliary dryer, does little to improve drying time. The conclusion is straightforward. Dryers must be used with precision and knowledge. The research is clear. Too much dryer backfires, creating a surface that skins over while leaving the layers underneath in stagnant limbo. If a supposedly quick fix leads to long-term instability, is it really a fix at all? Cobalt dryers function at the surface. Japan and other mixed dryers work through the layers. Both accelerate drying, but improper application leads to defects that cannot be undone. More dryer is not better. In fact, more dryer is often worse. Use them judiciously, test them before introducing them into final compositions, and always ensure proper ventilation. These are chemicals, after all, and some pose genuine hazards to your health. Dryers can be a valuable tool or a recipe for disaster. Understanding how they work is a key to avoiding costly mistakes. If questions remain, seek answers before applying them blindly to your work. Remember that mastery of materials is the foundation of great painting, and those who understand their tools wield the greatest control over their art. Have a painting question? Drop it in the comments, and we might feature it in a future episode. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more expert painting tips. Until next time, stay informed, experiment with care, and remember, when it comes to dryers, restraint is often the best strategy.